This is an algal bloom. Specifically, it's a cyanobacteria bloom. Cyanobacteria, under the right conditions, can grow to cover massive areas of water. These little guys like warm, sunny, still weather. The problem is, they suffocate fish and release toxins into the environment. The fish deaths are due to a process known as eutrophication. When very large amounts of nutrients enter a body of water like nitrogen or phosphorus from agricultural runoff or sewage, algae are given favorable conditions to grow extremely quickly. When this algal bloom inevitably dies, the dead algae are decomposed by bacteria, and this process consumes oxygen. As a result, after a bloom occurs and the algae die, the animals suffocate without any oxygen to breathe. That is why we see piles of fish covering the shores of artificially eutrophic lakes. The other issue with these blooms is that cyanobacteria release cyanotoxins, with the most prevalent ones being microcystins, abbreviated as MC. The EPA recommends health advisory levels at or below 0.3 micrograms per liter for microcystins in drinking water for children less than 6 years old. For school-aged children through adults, the recommended levels for drinking water are at or below 1.6 micrograms per liter. In the case of skin contact, the MDPH has recommended that individuals be advised not to contact the water when a visible scum or mat is present, or the MC level equals or exceeds 14 parts per billion, which is approximately 14 micrograms per liter. These numbers are pretty small, which is not a good sign when we look at the MC levels in Lake Coronu. This lake is the largest water body in Lebanon and was intended for irrigation, hydropower, and recreational activities, as well as an anticipated drinking water supply. Being used for recreational activities and as a drinking supply means that the MC levels need to be below 0.3 micrograms per liter for drinking and 14 for skin contact. The bad news is that the lake's MC levels have been recorded to reach up to 429 micrograms per liter. That's 1,400 times higher than the safe drinking water limit and 30 times higher than recommended levels for swimming. This much microcystins can cause a plethora of health issues. Exposure to untreated water containing microcystins at a dialysis center in Brazil resulted in acute liver failure in 101 patients, of whom 50 died. The CDC released a fact sheet listing MC symptoms like abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, headaches, diarrhea, sore throat, blistering around the mouth, and pneumonia. Even more worrying information is that there are no known antidotes to cyanotoxins. Some extremely apathetic listeners from Florida might think, oh that's so far from here. So I have a local example for them. Lake Okeechobee has had cyanobacterial blooms since 1980, but the most recent blooms were in 2016, 2018, and this past summer of 2023. Concentrations of microcystins during the 2016 bloom in Lake Okeechobee, Florida were routinely above 10 parts per billion. These levels aren't nearly as high as Lake Coronu. However, people still became ill and much of the nearby fish population died. If that doesn't convince you, then how about the fact that exposures to cyanotoxins have killed fish, dogs, cattle, birds, and other wildlife? If someone's pet drinks contaminated water, there's no known cure no known test to confirm exposure, and the only treatment available is to wash the pet and hope for the best. If that isn't just terrible, I don't know what is. The most obvious solution to all these problems is for governments to step in and prevent runoff from farms and sewage from streaming into local lakes. This is essentially impossible, so instead we can reduce phosphorus and nitrogen in fertilizers, which prevents blooms and is cost efficient for farming. Another solution is constructing stormwater treatment areas, which are man-made wetlands that will naturally remove phosphorus from stormwater runoff. Either way, these algal blooms are a global issue that need to be stopped for the well-being of people, plants, animals, and the beautiful lakes, rivers, and seas of our Earth. I'll leave you with a map of blooms worldwide. Thanks for watching.